Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. I'm Elisabetta, an Italian watercolor artist, and today I'm reviewing this uh, set by Roman Schmal Aquarius, and this is the Pasqualino Fracasso set. Pasqualino Fracasso is an Italian artist, a watercolor artist. I think he's really excellent, and I was really, really curious about this set. I suggest you to check his uh, Instagram account. Uh, he has some very, very beautiful watercolor uh, paintings. It has been in my wish list for a long time. Actually, I bought it quite uh, some time ago, but in my drawer I have uh, a few set that uh, I wait to open until I have a good opportunity to review them. Without further delay, let's swatch it. First of all, we have a look at the box. There is a nice uh, painting by Pasqualino Fracasso. Um, art materials for advanced artists. Definitely this is an artist uh, watercolor set. I have many followers that have suggested this uh, brand to me. I have seen quite a few reviews online and I was really curious about this set, which is I think made in Poland. Everything in this box is uh, both in English and in Italian. I don't know why, maybe because Pasqualino Fracasso is uh, is Italian. In any case, there is here a short bio, biography of Pasqualino Fracasso. It says he's a signature member of American Watercolor Society and he has been invited to exhibit and hold workshops all around the world. He's an eclectic artist who loves experimenting new visions and styles, alternating transparent and strong colors with more gray and opaque ones. Here there are the colors and uh, everything comes in English and in Italian. By the way, I bought this on Jackson's Art because here in Italy I haven't found it. And uh, yes, it's made in Poland, like Renaissance, another Polish uh, brand that I would love to review sooner, sooner or later. And okay, let's open it. And as you see, it's a cardboard box with uh, blind colors. There are no information about uh, the pen. Let's open one, for instance. It's like a chocolate box. Mm, yummy. And uh, yes, there are no information. It's blind. But um, all the informations are on the back of the box, including the code number, the name of the paint, both in Italian and English, and the pigment information. So it's quite exhaustive, but uh, you need um, separate to buy a separate palette. I'm so lucky that um, some time ago I had bought a spare palette. So I'm putting the pants uh, in the same order here, and then I'll come back for swatching. I have placed all my pants uh, in this um, tin and uh, I have this wonderful apparently full pants I seriously love full pants I have um, other sets that are in full pants and they are Rosa Gallery which I adore and White Knights so I think it's very much in the tradition of Eastern Europe to have these full pan sets. It's very nice because you don't ruin your brushes and it's easier to pick the paint. So let's start swatching them right now. It's a really, really, really yummy scene like this. I just can't wait to swatch this. Fantastic. Let's start with the buff titanium. 
buff titanium it's a color that uh, i don't use much but that i really like it's an opaque uh, warm uh, gray this is made with pw6 uh, column one so it's uh, titanium white it's probably treated slightly roasted so that it acquires uh, this beautiful uh, warm uh, hue my dog is barking in the garden ignore him the first feeling that i have the swatching uh, roman schmal is uh, very easy to re-wet, very soft and really easy to spread on paper. The paper is dry because um, the squares are small so I didn't want to make a mess but uh, I don't think it's a problem because the paper, the dispersion on paper is just perfect. Let's go to Cherry Quinacridone Red which is um, Queen Red PR209 and it's very vibrant it's a coral almost a coral you see this is typical of quinacridone red i have it in other brands like daniel smith's but then we will compare these colors with other artist grade brands as a final conclusion it's very very nice you know quinacridone colors don't granulate they're very light fast very very vibrant and this is beautiful. Then we have Quinacridone Pink, PR 122, which is also Quinacridone Magenta in other brands. And it's so transparent, it's so vibrant, so easy to lay on paper. Just perfect, you see, my brush just Glides and paper. It's fantastic this paint. Let's hope it's all like this. Mineral violet. This is PB29, which is ultramarine blue, so it should be granulating plus quinacridone violet PV19. And the addition of um, ultramarine blue PB29 makes it slightly granulating. I can tell you, I don't know if you can see that, but just uh, the ease of applying this paint to paper is incredible. Really, it glides, it glides like, um, it's like skating on ice, it's fantastic. Now, Shadow Violet. This is made with PG50, PB29, so a green, a blue and a quinacridone rose or violet and I have it from Paul Rubens the most famous version is by Daniel Smith you see the granulation it's very nice it's a muted gray it's fantastic here we have Aquarius black which is Mars black PBK 11 a granulating black. I like to use this type of black because you can mix it and have muted granulating uh, new hues if you mix it with your regular colors. This is not so granulating maybe but uh, this paper doesn't favor granulation so much. You like to use black uh, this is my favorite black uh, along with the neutral tint now here we have a uh, naples yellow light this is made with white i prefer the version without white to be honest but this is very nice this is um, pw6 py53 and pbr24 pbr24 is the naples yellow pigment and do you know what? This is one of the most beautiful Naples yellows I have seen in my life. This is wonderful Naples yellow because it's earthy, whereas other Naples yellow are just pale yellows. I love this. I really love this. 
It's wonderful. It's slightly opaque, you see, but that's the nature of Naples Yellow PBR24. It's an opaque uh, color and PW6, of course, is titanium white. This is wonderful, really a wonderful Naples Yellow. This is a transparent pyrrol, pyrrol, I'm not sure, orange. This is by far my favorite orange because it's very transparent, it's beautiful. I have two versions, one from My Mary and one from Schminke. And uh, I use it a lot, especially now it's fall, especially in this season. Look at how beautiful it is, completely transparent, PO71. It's really a must have in a palette and this version is wonderful. This is seriously, this is seriously artist grade. Beautiful colors, these are wonderful. Now, PR102, Veronese Red Earth. PR102 is the natural version of PR101. So it's natural red iron oxide. This uh, looks more like a burn sienna than like a English red. It's quite transparent. And yes, it, it's wonderful. You know that burn sienna can be made with the PR101 and this is the natural pigment and it's very beautiful. It's difficult to explain how well it moves on paper. Uh, it's really something that you have to try. I had great expectations from this paint and they are completely fulfilled. Now PB28 in the teal version, this is Cobalt Seal Blue, PB28. It's a really shame I didn't swatch this along with the other teals, but I will compare it. It's slightly opaque, of course, which is a good thing in this case. And it is very beautiful. I don't think that granulation is one of the properties of this brand. It's also granulating, it's a bit like Rosa Gallery. Rosa Gallery is a great paint, but not very granulating compared to other brands. And this is um, Phthalo Turquoise. It's made with the Phthalo Blue Green Shade, PB15, Column 3 and PG7 Phthalo Green. And it's a transparent uh, Stalo version. Beautiful. Really beautiful. This is great paint to work wet on wet. I think if you like to work wet on wet, this is uh, absolutely to try. Now lavender. Lavender is a color that I don't have in any version. I'm not a big fan of pastel colors. I have it maybe from Kuretake. It's very opaque. It's made with titanium white, ultramarine blue and uh, PB16 manganese violet. It's very opaque. Uh, it's, it's pretty but not my cup of tea honestly. Lavender. Can be useful. Now a yellow that I have never met before is this PY PY 138. It's quinaphthalone yellow. It's a primary yellow. I think it's quite a new pigment. Never seen before. Might be my fault. Quinaphthalone yellow. Very very transparent primary light valued uh, yellow. It's not my favorite type of yellow, but it can be very useful. It can replace lemon yellow. If you don't want to use cadmium, for instance, this could be a good uh, choice. Then we have gold ochre, it's PY43. It's very beautiful. This is absolutely gorgeous. How could I live without this palette till today? Look at how beautiful it is. Maston is wonderful. And it's, it's quite transparent, I find, compared to other yellow ochre. Now, 
Cyprus burnt amber, it's PBR7. This is PBR7, which is natural iron oxide, and it's used for pension for a variety of browns. Really depends very much on the, how it's processed. This is Cyprus burnt amber. It's a beautiful, I think, burnt amber. Not too dark, warmer brown. I think I will rearrange my colors in the palette because it's a bizarre disposition, but I'm respecting now the box. This is blue sky, it's white and phthalo blue red shade. PB15 one, it's red shade. I'm not so crazy about uh, colors that use my dogs. Ciao, ciao. And uh, they use white in it, but um, it's a lovely, it's a lovely blue sky. I prefer other sky blues like uh, cerulean, but this is not bad. This looks almost purple in the pan, but it's not. Eh? Shallow blue, green shade, PB15, three. So easy to, to spread the paint on paper. Really nice. And you don't really need to overwork this. Uh, you get a lot of pigment with each brush stroke. Cobalt blue, my beloved cobalt blue. Granulating, lovely granulation. Oh, this is nice, I like it. This is really nice. I would rather use this for sky than this. That's really lovely. I like all the variation that you get with cobalt blue and the granulation, look at that. It's beautiful cobalt blue. This is nickel, can you see that? Yes. This is nickel azo yellow, the famous uh, transparent yellow or aureoline that many brands offer with a brownish man stone. And then once you water it down, it's very clean yellow. It's one of my favorite yellows. Look at this, it makes this um, great greens. I like this very much. I'm happy it is in this uh, set. Now we have Goethite and I have a version from uh, Daniel Smith. This is so easy to be wet and paint with it. I can't wait to make a whole painting with this. This is beautiful. I have to compare it with the Daniel Smith version, but still, it's a wonderful color. It's an earthy color. It's so natural, it's so organic, oh, beautiful. Now, Caput Mortum. I only have one version from Lucas. And it's nice, it's a nice one. This is very opaque, PR102, which is a natural red iron oxide, as opposed to PR101, which is uh, the synthetic one. And even for portraits, for shadows, this is very beautiful. It's uh, caput mortum, means uh, dead head in Latin. Uh, I don't wanna brag, but I have taken seven years of Latin at school and uh, the most useful thing now is understand caput mortum, dead head. Now Van Dyck Brown. It's the first time I meet this pigment, NBR8, which is natural brown eight. It's not so easy to re-wet, this one. It's mineral, I think. And it reminds me of uh, raw amber. It's, 
it's a nice uh, dispersion on paper despite the difficulty of rewetting it and uh, i think that for soil or landscape this is gorgeous i have another van dyke brown which i don't like very much by my mary i'm afraid to say aquarius green it's the only green uh, is except for the turquoise of this collection and let's see it's um, multi pig it's beautiful i think it reminds me of undersea green but we'll see it's a wonderful green with um, michelazzo yellow pbr 25 which is uh, uh, mother brown and uh, ultramarine blue it's granulating i think thanks to the ultramarine blue it's very muted it's very beautiful i want to use this as much as i can now a classic ultramarine blue it's intense ultramarine blue pb29 which is correct pigment I'm just staining my hands which is thing which is a thing that I really like staining my hands with paint I add some water to favor granulation okay now everything is dry it's really beautiful the choice of color is a bit uh, unusual. I think that there are some beautiful, outstanding colors, but some colors maybe are redundant and I miss some other important colors. It's great that there are unusual colors that you don't usually find in ready-made sets like buff titanium or cothite or caput mortum or this wonderful green. But on the other hand, I miss uh, some primary colors like a primary red that I don't see here. And also, I only have one green. Sure, I can mix my own green, but um, at least two greens I would have liked. Uh, I would have given up uh, the lavender. It's not a color that I use. And maybe there are two turquoises, one cobalt based and the other one phthalo based. Uh, maybe one of them is a bit too much. Then I have these two colors, the Gothite and the Gold Docker. They, and they are both wonderful colors, but they look a bit similar for me. The Gothite granulates slightly more, but um, I miss, for instance, a warmer yellow, like an Indian yellow. I use that type of yellow very, very much. So it's a bit unbalanced, but the quality is wonderful this naples yellow light for me is the most beautiful naples yellow i have in my collection and i'm sure i will make a video about naples yellow in the future the cobalt blue is unusually not much granulating let's say the granulation is not the forte of this uh, set of this brand but the strength of this brand is the fantastic pigmentation is the fantastic power and vibrancy of color and the incredible dispersion on paper. So let me say that the, there are some colors of this that will become some staples in my collection. This Van Dyke Brown is wonderful. It's so organic. This Aquarius Green is wonderful. Also, I love this Gothite. Gold docker is very beautiful. The mineral violet is wonderful. And the Naples yellow light, of course. So let me just compare some of these colors with some competitors. Here I have compared some colors from Roman Schmal to some of the best competitors. The first colors I have compared is Gothite. I hope is a correct way to say it. It's a color that derives his name from the German poet Goethe. So it's Goethe, Goethe, I'm not sure. In Italian it would be Goethe. But uh, I think that the Roma Schmal is at least as beautiful as the Daniel Smith. Daniel Smith is, you see, small granulating, slightly warmer, but Roma Schmal is also very beautiful. They're both beautiful. 
I, I like granulation personally, so this lack of granulation really, for me, it's a bit of a pity, but still wonderful color. The buff titanium here, once again, the Roman schmal on this column, we have the Roman schmal is slightly grayer, whereas Daniel Smith is slightly warmer, is more airy. And uh, consider that you use this in cloud, it could be a quality for Daniel Smith. The Shadow Violet, it's a color that um, is very popular, the Daniel Smith version, but I don't have it. Here, Roman Schmann once dries, very, very similar to indigo. It's almost a purplish indigo. I have the Paul Rubens version, which I love. There is a lovely color separation. There is incredible granulation. This is Shadow Violet. This is called the Shadow Purple, but uh, they're equivalent. And uh, I like the per Paul Rubens maybe slightly better, but this is also a wonderful night sky, for instance. The Aquarius green is maybe even more beautiful and more pigmented than the Undersea Green by Daniel Smith. It's really a great color to have. Also consider that you need to check this, but the price point for Aquarius Green is really, really very, very good. Nickel Azo Yellow I have compared to Rembrandt and sorry for Rembrandt, but Nickel Azo Yellow from Roman Schmal is the winner. Look at this wonderful brown spot here. This uh, brownish undertone in Maston is really what I'm looking for in a nickel azo yellow. Cobalt blue, I compared it with Old Holland. Sorry, this I made a mistake because I thought the Old Holland, I had the Orioloni Who, but no, it was the genuine Orioline PY40, so I couldn't compare. The Cobalt Blue um, Roma Schmal is maybe even more pigmented than Old Holland, which has a lovely Cobalt Blue. I don't see a lot of granulation in neither of them, but uh, the color itself, the hue, is really beautiful in Roma Schmal. Now oh, a quick sketch, just uh, some simple pencil lines and uh, so I'll try this uh, paint with a very simple sketch. It's not a watercolor tutorial, it's just uh, a demo what we can do with this uh, palette. It's the first uh, sketch I do with this uh, watercolor set.
I tried my quick sketch. It layers very, very well. It's uh, somehow difficult to control this Roman Schmal because uh, it's one of those paints like Rosa Gallery or Core that works best in wet and wet. So I, I like to, I'm a bit of a control freak when I sketch this, just a quick sketch. Don't consider the quality of my sketch. It's just to try out the paint. I can paint better than this. By the way, I invite you to visit me on my Instagram profile. There is the link in the description box so you can see my art. But um, in this apple, what I found is that color is extremely transparent, that you can layer very, very well, that you can mix the colors, not just on the palette, but also on paper, and it comes out beautiful. Some difficulty in control, you could the background, some cauliflowering, but... Um, this is not cotton and maybe I should have used cotton. This is my everyday sketchbook. I can improve the shadowing here. But um, I like the luminosity of the colors, the transparency, the possibility of layering, the great uh, mixing possibilities uh, really with this set. It's true, I didn't have a warm red, but I could easily mix it with my orange, my aureoline, my Michelazzo yellow and the quinacridone coral. So I managed. I really think that the artistic possibilities are very good and I'm really impressed by this set. Thank you Pasqualino Fracasso for the choice of colors. I could have uh, preferred maybe, I don't know, a yellow ochre or an Indian yellow to lavender, but you know, perfectionist does not belong to this world. I am very happy I have swatched this set. It has been in my drawer for a while and I'm looking forward to use it more in the future. I also tried to lift uh, some paint. It's very easy for highlight. It's very, very easy to lift. Look at this. Lift it. To put it in a nutshell, what I'm saying is that Roman Schmal it has an incredible price point. Although it doesn't come with the tin, so you consider that you only buy the pants, but the tin I had to buy separate. So if you add the tin to that, then it's not so cheap, but if you buy the, the pants open stock, those have an incredible price point. The quality of paint really compares with the best artist grade. It's very unique also, I find. Thanks for watching this video with me. I'm sure that many of you have tried the Roman Schmal because Many followers have suggested to try it and swatch it and reviewing it. They, those followers were completely right because it's really impressive paint. Not easy to find in Italy. I bought this on Jackson's Art during a um, sale uh, some time ago. And uh, I think there's maybe a sale right now on Roman Schmal. Have a look. But um, if you do like me, you, I'm always wait for sales and I only buy products when there is a sale. So they might sit in a drawer for some time, but I don't like to waste money. So here they are today. It's a good day to swatch them. Thank you very much. I'm waiting for your comments, your experience with these colors, your suggestions, what colors you have of this brand that I'm missing here. What do you suggest me to integrate this collection? I'm waiting for your comments. I love to interact with my followers that are starting to be quite a large community. So thank you to everyone. And ciao ciao. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't so far. And I'll see you in my next video. Ciao ciao from Elisabetta. Ciao. Ciao.